And we're back, everybody. The Royal Peacock. 1550 AD. Year 20 of the reign of King Tabin Shweti. I am the chief minister of a kingdom without a king. That just makes the you dumb. From Portugal Get it? Because King Dumb without the king, king is the dumb. My ha. lord has taken to drinking and forgotten both the ways of Buddhism and the blessings of the Nats. He leaves with the foreigner for weeks at a time on long wine-filled hunting trips. Even when he is in court, the king orders executions in drunken fits. Many of the kingdom's officials have pleaded with me to depose the king and rule Burma justly. But... Though I love my country, I cannot betray my brother. I should have known rebellion would come. A monk named Ta, brother of the dead Hantawadi king, incites a revolt in the south. The king is leaving on yet another hunting trip, but he has ordered me to take the army to defeat this rebel. I will follow my king's instructions, but I am concerned. A minister named Sartat is eager to see me leave. I do not know what trouble he has brewing. He is going to assassinate the king. Bring word of King Tabanshweti's death to Bayanong. Kill or convert S uh, Smim Sawtut before reaching Bayanong. We are restricted to a pop limit of 200. Some of Sawtut's men feel guilty for their crime. They will either run away from the monk's chastisement or be converted to Bayanong's cause. There is more than one way to get out of Pegu. Uh, there is also one more than one way to kill Smim Sawtut. Allying with an enemy provides an immediate respite, but peace strengthens them. It is a gamble that you will be that you will become more powerful than them in time. You must destroy Sokate's camps to stop his uprising. Loyalists in Pegu are attempting to reach Bainong, located southwest of the Burmese capital. Only he will restore order to Burma. Uh, Smim Saltut, the king's assassin, controls Pegu and the battle elephants of the royal court. Taro Damayaza, an esteemed advisor to uh, Tabanchweti, believes he should be king and fields ballista elephants. Um, this is the, the monk, the hero monk, who was with us in the first two scenarios. Uh, Smim Ta. A Mon Prince turned rebel monk commands a devoted following of monks and devout Buddhist warriors. Uh, Sokate of the Tungu Hills commands a popular uprising. His supporters are poor, poor soldiers but are numerous. Only by dispersing their camps will they be defeated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the oh, blind yeah. lame priest. He's back. The king has been murdered. Oh, no, we no, must no. tell Bainong of his brother's death. Oh, Only he will rule hey, Burma ma. justly. Yoba. Oh, no, lame. Okay. Oh, Wait, what? Um, it used to be... What? I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen. Not much of... Uh, he's, he's a faker. He's not lame. He may be blind, I mean, you can't really tell, but he sure as hell isn't lame. Anyway, um, so there's a lot of little ways you can get out of Pegu. Okay. If you manage to kill or convert Smim Sautat, um, okay. you essentially just erase these guys as being a threat. Uh, that's something new from uh, DE. It used to be that like killing or converting him doesn't really do anything, but now... Uh, well, if you kill him, like, it's, these guys are just defeated, and he's just not a threat. Get back here. I, yeah, that's weird. So it's pretty convenient, because then it means that you won't have to deal with Smim Sautat as a threat, and he's an Imperial Age. Okay. 
he is right over here by the docks. Catch him, Bobby. Hope He's right over here. Yeah, there he is. There's some himself. He only has 70 HP. I wonder what happens if you convert him. Hatred is never appeased by hatred. The king's assassin repents. Okay. okay. Cool. Hey. Wait, so he changed dance with us to ally and then was defeated? Okay. Anyway, uh, we can get Nonvoy over here, which is a pretty decent hero unit. Also, I think if you go to the docks, you can get, um, like a random trade cog or something. There's a lot of random units you can get, a lot of different ways out of the city. But I've never converted Sawtuck before, so I'm not sure what it does. Anyway, here's the camp that we'll be working with. This is the very last scenario where we will get to boom. Because there are two more Binong scenarios, but in either do you get an economy. So we have to really relish this uh, opportunity to boom. My country will be in chaos if I do not stop these pretenders. My grief okay. must wait for another day. Indeed it must. Okay. okay, so I guess it doesn't really matter if you kill him or not. Regardless, he's not a threat. And, like I said, he's the strongest enemy. So it's pretty damn good for you. Anyway, so now we have to defeat everybody, and we've already defeated one of them. Also, we don't get these units anymore, they all disappeared. So we're gonna start by going up against Thado Damayaza. The master of his roost, the fighting peacock must be vicious against his enemies. Yes. Anyway, we're going to go take everybody out, because we're awesome. Because your enemies start pretty weak. Buffalo. Anyway, we took out one of his TCs and killed one of his villagers. Like, they have. This guy has very little to start with. There's also another TC over here we can take out. Also, we're gonna start gathering some stone so we can afford extra TCs. Oh, yeah. They only have one battle elephant. Or ballist elephant, rather. It's, you know, like a battle elephant, but much less useful. Okay. Yeah, here's their second TC. They have a third one that's in here, in the little fortress or whatever. But we can't take that one out yet, so we're just gonna cripple them. Okay, now we're going to go over to Sokate, who is only in Feudal Age, and they'll just spawn units at interval intervals. And then uh, Smim Ta is going to be our most dangerous enemy, but even then he shouldn't be that bad. Like. 
So long as you deal with Sautut, none of the other enemies are all that scary. Come on, Mr. Rhino. I'm gonna get a house. And yeah, everyone, I guess, is uh, Burmese. Except for uh, Tado Damayaza, who is uh, Khmer. up over here. Or actually, the one over here would probably make a bit more sense. Okay. I forgot you can do this now. I forgot they have a little bit of gold income over here. But we're mainly going after Socote. Or Socote. Oh, there's Smim Hatal. H Tal. Um, well, they're actually going after our pop space, which is mildly annoying. Just get a couple knights out. Well, actually, they have monks, so I might need to make some scouts or I don't know something. That's a Malay unit. taking out um Sokote. Oh, there's more water on buffalo. Oh, rip, that was a multi-buffalo. Yeah, see, they just spawn units at regular intervals. They don't like have an eco or anything. Okay, looks like orange went away. No! I was so greedy. No! Damn it. Jerks.
Okay. Alright, how's this going? I don't remember what buildings exactly keep them in the game, so we're just kind of destroying all of them. But you can see how Blue's score isn't going up. It's because we just so crippled him. I'd be surprised if he had more than, like, two villagers right now. Anyway, we can now afford a castle. Get one going. Onward. And then we'll just get to Imperial Age as we're able. I don't think we need to go up to four TCs, even if this is our last chance to boom. It turns out Imperial Age units are pretty good against uh, Feudal Age units. Oh yeah, like, the, the, the units are literally spawning right there. I don't want to get that before I go too heavily into farming. Before I fully embrace my Jethrovian lifestyle. Oh no. I have literally every regret. Get the goddamn castle up, man. Messy man. Okay. Wait 
We got it. Zero casualties. Is still really going after my villagers? <sighs> okay, now that we have our own 20 bajillion idle villagers. is fine. <laughs> Let's go deal with Snoopaw. Well, I mean, he does have a castle, so we're gonna have to wait till Imperial Age and get a trebuchet or two out. second. Oh, those are war galleys. Actually, click Imperial Age, shall we? Actually, let's go for some Burmese infantry. That is awesome. does affect the Rombai, by the way. Also, just like with Conquistadors, three are for one shot of Villager. Ah, so damn inaccurate. Blech. Rumi's infantry are very good, by the way. attack. Your champions end up being with one less attack compared to Aztecs, but you get it for free, and with each age instead of like just an Imperial Age, and they do get Halberdiers, unlike Aztecs who do not. Which is pretty great. Elephant. Oh man, I keep on thinking that's a freaking demo ship. They look too similar. Chub. Up. 
I mean, our enemies are in Castle Age. There's really not a whole lot to be afraid of. Yazo's score is increasing so slowly. We really need to triple him. Oh, that dude's super stuck. Hey, those are tigers. Not even the Burmese kind, like the, the first scenario in this campaign. I guess this just shows you a good place to build a mining camp. Yeah, all of this, like there'd be a TC right here that Sautuk would have control over, and then he'd have the control over all of Pegu. So you'd have to take down all of this. Also, the Temple of Heaven is just randomly located in Pegu. That doesn't make much sense. But I've found that life is much easier when you don't ask questions. Which is why I'm, you know, an academic. LOL! Okay. There goes... Ta. There's the castle. I guess we can get siege engineers. Sure, why not? Oh yeah, none of them asked to ally with me. Usually, if I recall correctly, they, they had, one of them is like, hey, you should ally with me, either blue or orange. And they had that in the, uh, the hints or whatever. 20 attack on these champions. Cavalry just yet. And once this guy goes down. He will have won! Get out my game, castle time! Oh look, they have a villager. This guy is really not a threat. Also, damn, Burmese champions are good. Tonight, I will shed tears for my dead brother, the king. In the morning, I will take the throne and build the empire he dreamed of ruling. Just to show, you can get a trade cog, a heavy demo ship, and a monk here. 
and use them as your like your relay team to get over here to Bayanong in the beginning. But other than that, we pretty much explored everything. I mean, you have four enemies, one of which you can destroy in the very beginning, or at least like make a non-threat in the beginning. One you can raid oh, really quickly. One is in the feudal age, and then that just leaves you with uh, Smimhuta, which is uh, not not very hard. Oh crap, I never lowered the game volume. It's probably been really loud this whole video. Whoops! Sartat paid two swordsmen of the king's bodyguard to enter my brother's tent as he slept. Their pockets heavy with the traitor's gold. They drew their swords and headed my brother. His body was found by a monk and quietly cremated. I would throw away this crown if it brought my brother back. But he is among the gnats now. The gnats were tricky, just as my mother told me. They took my brother from me. I should not be king. I should not be the Chakavati. But the gnats made it so. I reject them. Oh man. Yeah, sorry if the, the game volume was loud. What? Tributed 900, negative 950 resources to myself. Anyway, that was the Royal Peacock. Next up will be our second to last scenario with the White Elephant. See you guys next time.